Hey buddy, it's Hitsy for Newstar here, and today we're going to be going over uh, an intermediate level of a top-down sh shooter. Now, I already have done a top-down shooter, but this time I've decided to do a more intermediate level one to where we actually have effects, so we're going to have ghosting effects, blur effects, and some sort of uh, particle effects on this top-down shooter. So while my first top-down space shooter could be played on it literally any device that was Windows, you know, uh, and you exported it to your really, really old Android phone. You could probably pull it there with no issues. Here, we're gonna, you're gonna have to have an actual device with some sort of, um, like, th engine in it. You know, you're, you're actually gonna have to have a really decent, not like a super phone, but you know, a decent processor in your phone. So at this moment I'm gonna go over the basics uh, before we actually go into anything heavy. As usual with all my uh, starts to my series I usually do a tutorial on um, basically how I start everything up and then we're actually gonna go uh, steamrolling through because this is it and um, this is gonna be a pretty heavy duty series and I've been actually gearing up for it. I'm still trying to find all my assets but I've got enough of them to actually start the series going that's why there hasn't been a video for a while all right <clears throat> so I have my space background and by now if you've been following my channel for a while um you'll know how to import a background objects and all that stuff but if you don't what we're gonna do is I all I did was hit new scene and new empty project I didn't do anything else I then went to view and my default browser is going to be the NWJS. This means I can run it in a kind of like a windowed, uh, windowed setup similar to if you were running it on a uh, basically your own PC like any other normal game. Um, I have a background so what I did there, hold on I need to exit this program. So what I did was I clicked right insert new object and then I inserted a tiled background. I went and searched to my computer for a seamless space background and then I clicked right, insert new object, clicked on sprite and then chose the sprite ship. All the links will be down below and then I did the same thing and searched for this shield effect. Now something that I did with the shield effect uh, actually with the ship <coughs> is that I enabled a bound to layout and you can do that by hitting behaviors and then we're going to add behavior and I did uh, well bound to layout and I also did a direction so a direction and then what I did with that was I said directions to left and right so he can only move left and right and he is bound to the actual scene so if he tries to move out of the scene, well actually, for some reason, he's still bound to land. Okay, I may have to add that to the ship too. So we're gonna do that right now. So it's, he's, the shield is pinned to the ship. I'm gonna show, that, show you guys that real quick. Bound to layout. And of course, that is because the scene is bigger. So what I want to do now is choose the size of my scene and then shrink the layout down. We want to hit Run Layout. And he suddenly cannot do anything. Now we're going to fix the actual ship movement a little bit later but that's good enough for us right now. Okay so we're going to go into event sheet and we're going to go on start of layout so I'm going to I'm going to redo this so add event system so I haven't imported any new events or anything like that yet so we're going to go system and I'm going to say on start of layout the shield sprite is going to be pinned to an object. And we're going to choose that object and it's going to be the ship. And we're going to say the position and angle done. And we can just delete this old one. So now when he moves 
The shield moves with them. Now, I made the shield a little bit bigger than the ship so that when our uh, enemies actually shoot him or, you know, or the space turrets or whatever, they hit the shield and not him. So now what we're going to do, and this is very important, so all this is on layer zero. This is the, basically the game layer. We're going to create a new layer. And this layer is going to be, um, I had layer on top of, yes, layer one. And then we're going to go over here. So I've actually clicked on, so I'm going to click on zero. And you can see all, all the properties of that layer. And now we're going to go to layer one. And we're going to set the... Uh, parallax and that means the actual movement so if you had multiple ones and you had them at different like movement speeds like we could set it to uh, 20 and 100 and it would slowly shift uh, at a slower speed than the rest of them as the rest of the frames of the, of the layers so that it would cause some sort of space movement but we don't want this to move at all we want this to move with the actual uh, guy um, and again you don't actually need this because uh, uh, what we're gonna do now is um, to keep down some of the process speed we're not gonna have a huge gigantic layer some people when they do top-down sh uh, shooting games will have a um, a vertical shooter and it will just go on and on and on and on. Well, that takes up a huge amount of uh, processing power. And even though you're running this on a PC or web or even a really good Android device, there's going to be people who will be playing this on devices that probably sh uh, can't handle it. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to do a lot of off-scene camera stuff. So we're going to have, remember, Construct2 renders it if it's off uh, um, only if it's on scene. Now it knows it's there when it's off scene, but it doesn't render it. So w when it actually comes into camera scene, then it renders it as an image. So all that stuff is basically buffered, which most modern and even older devices can do. But once you have a lot of stuff on screen, that's when it takes up a lot of power. So at this point, uh, I want the parallax to be zero and zero. Now again, you don't have to have this because we're not moving out again. Remember, I sized down our scene, so we're not being we're not going to be moving and moving the camera off scene or anything like that. So we just want to make sure everything is going to be tight fit and in the box, so we don't have to worry about anything. We've checked all the boxes that we need to. Now in the next video, we're going to be dealing with the actual player's health bar. So we're going to get the uh, player's health bar system down, their shield down, their hull. So they're going to have a shield effect, uh, or a shield indicator, a hull indicator. So say their shield um, takes all the hits first, and then their, um, what do you call it, their hull takes... Uh, then the damage now we may include weapons that will go through your shield and straight for your hull And we're going to add those properties in a little bit later probably in the third or fourth video Now we're uh, also in the second video. We're also going to include an enemy um, About one enemy. I'm going to make sure it's a turret so we can fly around him, but he can shoot at us um, It's going to be pretty easy enough to destroy. We're also going to add a health bar right next to him so that we know how you know how much health he actually has um, and then we're going to you know as we, we're going to set the care uh, the character to always move upwards uh, or we could always set the enemy to move off screen and once he's off screen he's no longer rendered in the view because if we run the layout as soon as he moves from top to bottom and he's off screen he's basically deleted um, he's no longer there and you have to last so long in this scene or get to the enemy or uh, you know you have to uh, last so long it's basically what we're going to do we're going to create uh, basically 10 second levels to where you have to last 10 seconds and then at the end of basically every three levels we're going to create a boss I found at least one good boss ship that's going to be pretty cool and we're also going to enable upgrades so once you defeat the boss you are able to have one upgrade so you can upgrade your shields your weapons um, 
or some other aspect of your ship. So again guys, hit the like and subscribe button if you enjoyed this video. Comment down below if you'd like to have certain features added to this. I know I will be adding a pause feature and a semi-pause menu. So there's not going to be a dedicated menu, there's going to be more of a pause menu setup. Again, uh, and any other series that you would like to have uh, done any other features. I know I haven't done a constructive video in a while so uh, this is me getting back to it. Again this first episode was to get us back into constructive uh, and for those who haven't seen the other videos for them to have something entered to basically be very simple so that they can do it. I will put the download link for this file uh, down below so that you guys can open it and test it out and then in the next video we're going to be dealing with a whole lot more um, assets and coding features so um, thumbs up guys and I will see you in the next video